I want to continue these talks on uh, the practice. Uh, week before last, I gave four kinds of practice, and there is some uh, more material to discuss with uh, a new uh, type of practice of sort of the same line but different practice for the attainment of liberation. And this is called impatient practice, patient practice, taming practice, and calming practice. What is impatient practice? Uh, this especially uh, advice given to bhikkhus and bhikkhunis and upasikas and upasikas, anybody, but primarily address the bhikkhus. So Buddha said bhikkhus, there is the impatient practice. Here, someone does not patiently endure cold, heat, hunger, thirst, contact with flies, mosquitoes, uh, wind, burning sun, and serpents, and uh, rude and offensive speech, unable to bear up with arisen bodily feelings that are painful and racking, sharp, piercing, harrowing, disagreeable, sapping one's vitality. This is a very sharp description of how things happen when we practice. So one may practice with tremendous difficulties and uh, with a lot of impatience and then uh, finally the person might uh, attain the higher stage. Let me tell you uh, a simile. Since he has not trained himself or herself in moral principles and uh, then try to practice meditation, he is tired in paying attention to the awareness of material form, he is tired in paying attention to immaterial form, he is tired in paying attention to utilizing requisites like food, robes, lodging, medicine, he is tired in paying attention to impermanence, unsatisfactoriness, and selflessness. It's very difficult, very difficult. And is tied in paying attention to what is path, what is non-path. This is called one of the vipassana insight that arises. But it is difficult to make the distinction between path and non-path. And uh, even after gaining insight, seeing rising and falling, Seeing breaking, breaking means uh, everything is rising and breaking and disappearing. Rising and breaking, disappearing. It is just when you put uh, some uh, mustard seed in very hot pan, it breaks up very quickly and disappears. Similarly, 
when you practice meditation, you can see things arising and disappearing break very uh, quickly. Uh, and uh, uh, seeing fear, seeing fear means bhaya, the fear of uh, taking birth again, uh, fear of uh, losing one's attainment, all kind of fears arise in him. And uh, then seeing the cause of fear, all these are difficult. And the danger of the living, existing in samsara, it is very dangerous because nobody knows where one would be reborn again and again. Uh, then so the cause is person doesn't know the cause. Cause one must see dependent arising to see the cause. One and sometimes see them, seeing the cause of fear, danger, and dispassion, uh, and wishful liberation and equanimity regarding all fabrications. I use this word, new word, borrowed from uh, Thani Saro translation. Fabrication is sankhara. Sankhara is new term. Uh, we used to say conditioned things. Now he uses this term. This uh, seems That seems to be more appropriate. Fabrications. You fabricate all kind of things, fabricate even stories. And uh, following the noble way, entering the stream path, all this has become very, very difficult for him. And that is called uh, painful practice and sluggish attainment. That's called painful practice and sluggish attainment. Both are somewhat uh, slow. It's like um, somebody has lost a cow and uh, the, the person is going in a forest through very rough, harsh, thorny underbrush, undergrowth. And then finally he finds the cow sitting in that undergrowth full of thorny plants and uh, all kind of vines here and there and he find the cow. Similarly, the person's the practice is very painful and the attainment is painful. The thorny path similar to difficult path, finding the cow is gaining the result. Okay, then the second, that is the first one. Second is what is the patient path? Patient path is all that I mentioned earlier. Uh, somebody uh, managed to uh, tolerate, endure cold, heat, flies, uh, sun, wind, and all these things. Very patiently tolerate. And then even though he's uh, patiently tolerating all these things, uh, that person uh, seeing all these insights, 
he 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 practices without much struggle he practices without much struggle much pain but finally attainment is very easy and with pleasure easy and pleasure that is called the sluggish uh, path and easy and pleasant attainment it is just like someone looking for a, a cow herd particularly looking for his cow and he goes in a uh, on somewhat clear road looking for the cow and he find the cow sitting in a very uh, uh, thick forest with a lot of undergrowth thorny plants he finds the cow there and he catch him catch the cow there so this is like going in the easy path and attaining with some pain it is called sluggish attainment following the easy path so that is the second practice third practice is the having seen form with eye that is called uh, the practice with restraining taming practice taming practice uh, having seen form with the eye a bhikkhu does not grasp its marks and features that means does not pay very much attention to the details of the object whether it is animate or inanimate man or woman whatever the object the person sees with eyes the person does not pay much attention to it but simply notice that there is an object and uh, so the person does not uh, grasp its marks and features since if we left the eye faculty unrestrained he knows when he leaves his eyes unrestrained then what happen bad and unknown unwholesome states of longing and dejection might invade him when the eyes are not guarded protected with mindfulness and clear comprehension bad unwholesome states of longing and dejection uh, invade him suppress him obsess him and therefore he he practices restrain over that he know in the danger of non restrain the person restrain them he guard the eye faculty he undertakes the restrain of eye faculty and similarly when he hears a sound he does not take all the marks and details into account just become aware of the fact that is mere sound rising and falling sound waves hitting the eardrums and disappearing 
and does not take in details into account. If it does take details into account, again, bad, unwholesome states of longing and dejection invade his, his mind, obsess his mind. This is very important practice. Similarly, with the nose, the same thing with the nose, tongue, body, and mind. When objects arise through them, are present to them, then the, per the person don't take the details, in, details and marks into account. Now, in there is another discourse called in Majjhima Nikaya, Indriya Bhavana Sutta. Indriya Bhavana Sutta. One of the uh, Nigantas disciples went to see the Buddha, and then Buddha asked, uh, How does your teacher, his name is Parasariya, how does your teacher teach the teaching? The students in my teacher teaches when an object is present, don't look at them. When the sound is there, don't let your ear hear the sound. Then Buddha stopped and he said, then of course, in that case, a blind and deaf are restrained. Then Buddha explained, in my dispensation, I don't teach like that. With the eyes we see objects, ear we see the, hear the sound, and so forth, we use the senses and uh, we become aware of them. But as soon as an object is present to our eyes, we immediately let it go and bring the mind to equanimity. So Buddha said, just like someone who blinks eye when, he, when unpresent object is present, he doesn't want to see it. So blink, close the eye and open. Like that, very quickly he let it go. When the person hears a sound, then immediately become aware of it, just like uh, dropping a drop of water onto a uh, lotus, it very quickly fades away. And similarly, let it go and bring the mind to the equanimity. Similarly, nose, touch, uh, taste, touch, when these, they are subject to objects arise, just become aware of the object, aware of its impermanent nature, and bring mind back to equanimity. So then those objects that we see, hear, smell, taste, touch, will not invade the mind because the meditator maintain restraint, <coughs> maintain uh, his equanimity. So that is taming practice. And then that is uh, uh, also not very easy, but somewhat difficult. But at the attainment, uh, that practice is easy. So, uh, that is the practice is easy. Uh, practice is difficult. Attainment is easy. It is just like a cow herd looking for the cow going through a forest with undergrowth 
with thorny brushes and so forth. And then he finds the cow sitting in an open area. So it is easy for him to catch the cow. But the path is difficult. Similarly, the restraining is difficult, but the attainment is very easy. Even with difficulties we practice, attainment is easy. And the last practice is somebody uh, practices that is called calming practice. Dhamma, Sama Dhamma. And Buddha said, a bhikkhu does not tolerate an arisen sensual thought. Kama Vitak. He does not tolerate it. He abandons it, dispels it, calms it down, terminates it, and obliterates it. So immediately he let it go. Let it go. What the, what the specific, specifically sense desire. In the previous example, and not any such specific thing mentioned, sight, sound, smell, taste, and so forth mentioned. But in this example, in this practice, Buddha specifically mentioned that when a greedy thought, thought of lust, arises in the mind, he does not tolerate it. Immediately, he let it go, sensual thought. Similarly, when ill will, vyapad, arises in him, immediately he let it go and switch on to metta practice, mindfulness practice. And, and thought of cruelty, hurting someone. As soon as that thought arises, he let it go, dispel it, and practice karuna, compassion, practice. And uh, and whatever unwholesome state arises, he dispels it, abandon it, and calm the mind. That is calming practice. Calming practice. That is like the practice is calm, attainment is very comfortable, peaceful, with pleasure. That is like a coward looking for a cow. He goes on a very clear road. No thorny undergrowth. Not, he, can, he won't be entangled in the brushes and wires and so forth in the forest. It is, he goes on the road, clear road. And then he finds the cow sitting in an open area. Sitting in an open area. So his path is very easy. Attainment is easy. That is called calming practice. So these are the four types of practices. What are they? So to sum up, I must say, uh, impatient practice, patient practice, taming practice, and calming practice. Impatient practice is difficult, difficult path, attainment is difficult. Patient practice Practice is easy, comfortable, but the attainment is difficult. Taming practice is difficult, attainment is easy. 
calming practice, practice is easy, attainment is easy. These are the four types of practices. Now, this is what happens to us when we try to practice meditation. We go through all these things. Now we remember the simile. A cow herd looking for a cow, cow, all of a sudden the cow disappears, we assume. Looking for the cow, he is going through very thorny, hard forest with a lot of undergrowth. And then find the cow lying in that harsh environment, in the thorny forest. That is That means practice is difficult, attainment is difficult, and yet she'll attain. Secondly, the person goes through the forest with undergrowth, thorny road, looking for the cow, and then he finds the cow sitting in the open and he catches him. That is, practice is difficult, attainment is easy. Third is cowherd going looking for the cow and going on a clear road, looking for the cow, and finds the cow sitting in a thorny undergrowth forest, thick forest, and he catch him. That is, practice is easy, attainment is difficult. Last one is the cowherd going on a good, clear road, looking for the cow, and find the cow in an open meadow grass and he catches him. That is the easy practice, comfortable attainment. Easy practice, attainment with pleasure. And now, friends, when we practice meditation, we can see we are one of them. Either, either impatient practice, patient practice, taming practice, or calming practice. Now, when we have impatient practice, don't give up. When you have patient practice, be happy. When you have uh, what you call taming practice, don't be disappointed. That is the nature of our senses. And when we are, when we are calm in practice, be delightful, be happy, full of joy. And therefore, one day you may find one in one of these positions. Another day you may find in another position. So this ap appear uh, apply to our each and every individual personality. And therefore, we must not be discouraged. We have to be very uh, enthusiastic. We must keep hope, keep our hope kindled. Don't give up any hope. Continue to practice. You certainly, one day, sooner or later, attain very high level of attainment. And I wish you luck. <laughs> now I want to stop this and start our meditation practice. Okay? Okay, let us reflect on loving friendliness, meditation, and then meditate. I think you have enough instructions. 
I don't have to repeat them. In order to save time, after reciting this, we all practice. May all beings be happy and secure. May all beings have happy minds. Whatever living beings there may be, without exception, weak or strong, long, large, medium, short, subtle or gross, visible or invisible, living near or far, born or coming to birth, may all beings have happy minds. Let no one deceive another, nor despise anyone anywhere. Neither from anger nor ill will should anyone wish harm to another. As a mother would risk her own life to protect her only child, even so towards all living beings, one should cultivate a boundless heart. One should cultivate for all the world a heart of boundless loving friendliness. Above, below, and all around, unobstructed, without hatred or resentment, whether standing, walking, sitting, lying down, or whenever awake, one should develop this mindfulness. This is called divinely dwelling here, not falling into erroneous views, but virtuous and endowed with vision. Removing desire for sensual pleasures, one comes never again to birth in the womb. With this metta thought, let us practice meditation for the next uh, 25 minutes.
By means of this meritorious deed, may I never join with the foolish. May I join always with the wise until the time I attain Nibbana. May the suffering be free from suffering. May the fear struck be free from fear. May the grieving be free from grief. So too may all beings be. From the highest realm of occasion to the lowest, may all beings arisen in these realms, with form and without form, with perception and without perception, be released from all suffering and attain to perfect peace. Excellent, excellent, excellent. Okay, friends, this is the end of today's session. And I hope you all continue your practice. And let me do my final uh, wish. The same way. May all those who are in hospitals suffering from various diseases recover very soon, return to normal health and practice meditation and attain liberation from samsari suffering. May all the doctors, nurses, and hospital staff who take care of these people with care, love, compassion, may they find time to practice Dhamma, meditation, and liberate themselves from samsaric suffering. May all those who have lost their loved ones and grieving, may they be free from grief and find the nature of Dhamma, practice meditation and attain liberation from samsaric suffering. May all those who are in various troubled spots war zones, discrimination, poverty stricken, and all of them find peace, happiness, solace, and comfort, and attain liberation from samsaric suffering. May all those who are in the northern direction, northeastern direction, eastern direction, Southeastern direction, southern direction, southwest direction, western direction, northwestern direction, above, below, all around. All these beings in ten directions be well, happy, and peaceful. This is my very sincere metta. May you all be well. Sadhu, 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 sadhu. sadhu. Okay. Thank you, Bhante. Thank you so much, Bhante. Bless you. Thank you, Bhante. Thank you, Bhante. Thank you, Bhante. Thank you, Sangha. Wish you well. Everyone's